Thank you. Uh, so I'm Emma or Emmanuel, if you really want to have a mouthful. Um, I am the co-founder of a small company in Belgium. You might have heard of me regarding one of those two libraries, the schema adapter and Ember's Heli crudities. I am not going to talk about that today. So if you want to talk about those libraries to me, just find me in the halls. Um, today we're going to talk about refactoring. And um, as I said, we're uh, part of a small business. And we do mostly remote work and sometimes we uh, find projects that have already been started for a while by different teams and sometimes it's a mess. And so that's how I got the idea for this talk. Once I, I, I got into a project, I came, I came there and said, oh yeah, we have to improve the maintainability and performance of uh, this feature. And I looked at the feature and it was this method that was several screens long with nested ifs and for loops and stuff. And it was not readable. And uh, I had no idea where to start to get it faster because I could not read the code. So before we get started, what is actually refactoring? Well, refactoring can be many things. Uh, if somebody tells you, hey, this is the one recipe for refactoring. Well, don't listen to them because refactoring is a lot of different things and so there cannot be only one recipe. Refactory can be something, refactoring can be something as simple as renaming one single variable all over your code because you decided that finally that name that you gave it was not that smart of a name after all. It can be updating your code style and making your code base that they com compliant, for example, if it was not for starters. That's, that's one sort of refactoring too. Refactoring can also be rewriting a single method function or class to make it more maintainable. Just one, you don't have to do the whole code. But refactoring can also be rewriting that same thing to make it just more readable and uh, to make it easier for other people to add other features. And that's mainly what we're going to be looking at today. And finally, refactoring can be rewriting almost everything and just keeping the name of the project. <laughs> um, and so this is the kind of method that I want yeah, it's sideways, did you notice? Because I didn't have enough room to put it vertically, so I had to put it sideways. This, this is the kind of mess that I was talking about. And other than the fact that it's sideways, you probably ha are having troubles reading all of this. Uh, you have no idea what it does. Uh, it's just comments, it doesn't do anything. Um, and this is something that is really common, actually, to find this. And it is so common that people on the internet have made challenge, some kind of challenges. Uh, it's not really a challenge because there is no winner or loser, but it's an exercise to uh, make you refactor some code. This, is, uh, this one is a Gilded Rose Kata. There is gonna be other ones. Um, I forgot on the first slide there was the, um, the URL for the slides. I will go back to the first slide at the end of the talk. All these are working links, so you can click on the slides and you will have all the links, but you can also take pictures. Um, so this is, the first link is where I got the code. It's really nice uh, repo with the original code in many different languages, <coughs> including Python 2. Not 3, sorry. Uh, but we will work with Python 2. And the second URL is uh, where I pushed all the steps of the refactoring that we are going to do together. But this is the first session of the afternoon, of the last day. So I guess I need to keep you awake. So I'm going to be asking you some questions. Uh, I'm going to ask you to participate. Are you ready to help me refactor this? Yes. That's four people. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. So this is a new formula that I'm trying today. Um, I hope it works well. 
Um, first of all, so we're going to read the requirements of this uh, refactoring because we're new. We're new, we're new in the company. It, it looked fine. We, we got a nice contract, but it's our first day on the team. So here's the assignment, and I'm going to read it with you. Hi, and welcome to the team Gilded Throws. As you know, we're a small inn with a prime location in a prominent city run by a friendly innkeeper named Allison. Or you can, don't call me Allison, I'm Emma, it's not me. Um, we also buy and sell only the finest goods. Unfortunately, our goods are constantly degrading in quality as they approach their sell by date. We have a system in place that updates our inventory for us. That's good. It was developed by a non-nonsense type named Levi, who was moved, to, uh, was moved on to new adventures. Your task is to add a new feature to our system so that we can begin selling a new category of item, first an introduction to our system. So this document is very important because that's basically the requirements for what we are going to have to do for the next hour. And we're going to go back uh, to this document uh, every so often. And the first thing is that all items have a selling value, which denotes the number of days we have to sell the items by. Um, then the quality degrades. Um, they have a quality value, which denotes how valuable the item is. And all items degrades as the sell by date comes closer. I'm going to stop reading now. We will come back to this later. And we're going to start looking at the code for this. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> do you want to touch this? No? Are there tests? Yeah. Yes, tests. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, a good, that's a good start. Um, we are going to do tests. We are definitely going to do tests. And what is nice with this is that somebody actually did us a favor and also provided some fixtures. So we can run the current code on the fixtures and have the output, store the output, because right now there is absolutely no test on this code. So our baseline is that we've got some fixtures and we know that the code works. So if we change something, we have to be able to replicate the same result. But before we did that, um, this is some kind of simple example, but something that I like to do is that I like to look at the complexity of the current code. And there's a tool for that in Python that's called Fredon. It's uh, linked in the, in the slide. And Fredon allows you to calculate the complexity of your code in various different ways. And uh, this is uh, com uh, computing the uh, cyclic the complexity. And you see that our update quality methods got a C, so it's not very good. Uh, I try to often run my entire code by that, and um, in production code, AC is okay, but when you're starting to get D, E, and Fs, it's really bad. Uh, but as one C every once in a while can happen, there are other metrics. This is the one we're going to be using today. And we're um, also running the fixtures, so um, you can run the fixtures for as, as many days as you want. So here, the first thing I'm doing is that I've, I'm running all the fixtures and storing the results in a text file so that we can just update our codes, uh, rerun the fixtures, and do a vim diff between the two uh, text files. Uh, this is not tests, but when there is no test, being able to uh, output the result of something and compare it later and doing a vim diff between two things, it's a hack, but it works and it can save your life. Uh, now, next thing I want to do, we said we wanted to, to write some tests. And to be able to write some tests, um, I'm looking here at the test fixture program that was um, sent to us. I'm not able to resize that window. OK, great. So we've got all the items directly in the test program. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to take the data and put it somewhere else. 
So I'm taking all this. <coughs> and this is live, which is probably a bad idea. I didn't sacrifice any kitten. But this is going to be the only live part almost of this talk. Um, so from Kilted Rose, import item, since this is the, the class that we're using for all our data, is the class <coughs> item. And back in this, here we have to import items from data. And as you, as you might see, my, my, my Vim is not, I have two spaces, it's, it's okay. Uh, my, my Vim doesn't really like the code. Uh, it's not Pepe compliant, it's, that's okay, we don't care for now. So I'm going to quit all this to save it and quit and see if it still works. I guess I have to quit both files. So let's run the test again. And it doesn't work because I broke my code. It was a really bad idea to do that part live. Uh, <laughs> So, um, let's go back to syntax error, import items from data. From yes, that's a, thank you, thanks a lot. That's, that's, that's why it's fun to, to, to do things like that. And it's not the right file. And the fun thing is that I don't know why, but I don't see the last line of text on my screen right now. And who, who could guess what language I've been programming in for the, for the past few days? Travis, thank you. And so if I run this, Um, syntax error word expected. Okay, let's let's just pr trust me. It we, we got the same results because now I'm going to check out the next. I have two pythons. Yes, uh, let's let's not worry because if we do, we're going to run over time. I'm going to uh, just check out the next revision because I did plan this. I did plan that my coding is, was going to be awful when I was live. So everything is in a, in a repo. What I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to go and check out the next revision each time. Um, so um, here we have our uh, data and so we would like to write some tests. Uh, the first thing that we want to do, uh, since um, if we go back to our description, we are going to be able to see that um, once the cell date uh, is passed, the item decreases twice as fast. For certain items, the rate is different, and so on and so on. So the first thing I want to do is that I want to write a few test helpers that will allow me to get the different items that I need to be able to test their behaviors. Uh, so, back to my test, here you can see that I, I've already written some code, this one is going to work, um, and um, here I'm going to, st to stop and say, if you wanted a general refactoring talk, you're in the wrong place because we're going to do a lot of things that are only just working for Python. Uh, because um, Python is going to be really helpful. I said this is uh, 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 an exercise that's available in different programming languages. And Python is really, really helpful to give us uh, things that will allow us to work faster. For example, we have the, the first thing here, we are uh, declaring a property, which is not possible in all languages. And we are declaring a property on the test, and this is going to be our regular items that age in the normal way. And it's a simple list inclusion. 
I'm going to switch this. So what I'm doing is that I'm just returning all the items that are not special items. This is a simple list inclusion. Um, is everybody here familiar with list inclusion or do you want to know how they work? Okay, <clears throat> and so the test helpers we're going to do that for every type of items that we want to check. And what we want to check is that the quality increases or decreases as we are told it should do. So we're also writing a few other helper functions that are going to, um, to compare the original quality or the original selling date and uh, give us the list back. This is some helpers. Um, and then once we have that, we can start writing our actual tests. Um, maybe something that was not clear is that all, we have all the items on the site. And as you can see, the only uh, way that we can identify which item is what is by their name. So it's rather simple. We just have to parse the first word of the name of the item. So is everybody? Ready to go on? Yes, three people, I lost one. <laughs> okay. So the next thing is that we're going to start actually writing tests. And we're going to, going to test that the quality of regular items um, actually decreases. So um, as you might have noticed, uh, and as some people have said in the audience, testing is going to be the main thing that we're going to do before we're able to refactor. So that's about half of the code that we have to write. And I'm not going to explain all the testing details. If you want me to explain, I'm going to show them all. But if you want me to stop and explain one uh, in more details, uh, please raise your hand or shout or do something because I cannot spend all my time explaining the test or this is going to be very, very, very boring for everyone. So we've got our first test and it passes. Do we still have the video on the side there? Okay, great. Um, so we've got our first test and it passes. This, this is the road to progress. Um, next thing to do is to test that quality degrades, but also the sell by date degrades. It's almost exactly the same test. So while we are doing refactoring, let's refactor our tests and write a method that takes an attribute, which will be what we want to measure and make sure that it decreases and then call that. So let's run that and it fails. Oh, that's, that's not fun. Why, why does it fail? Uh, what, what does our cheat sheet say? Why, why would that fail? Oh, here, we, this is the reason why. See, I, I, I remember, I, I, I looked at it before. I knew where to search. So the age free item actually increases in quality the older it gets. So that's one. There's also, this one, the sulfurous, I didn't know it. The sulfurous never ages. It doesn't change, it doesn't decrease in quality, it never has to be sold. So this is, this is our culprit. The other one is about quality, but this, this one, this one uh, is the one that is posing problem. So let's fix that. Uh, and so we need to, to declare another helper that's non sulfurous item, so that's the item that do uh, age correctly. And instead of testing on all items, we're just going to test on, uh, test on this one, on the non sulfurous items. So let's go back to our test. We now have two tests passing. This is progress. I still got two people. I'm going. I, I, I have, I have to, to, to increase the speed of, of talking about the test. Uh, so we're going to be testing other stuff like um, the regular items uh, decreasing quality twice as fast when they are expired. 
And we've got three deaths passing. Next one. Um, why does it stop there? Uh, we are going to uh, test that the quality is never negative because uh, quality is something that doesn't go below zero. It either it doesn't, it's not worth anything or it's worth something, but it's not worth minus something. Um, French cheese, who, who likes French cheese? Okay, quite, quite a lot of people, about half of the people. So French cheese, you might know, it, it, it increases in quality, it's like wine when, when it gets older. Um, so let's, let's have a test for that too. Um, and then we have all the other uh, specific things, um, like the one we mentioned, the sulfurs that never changes. Uh, the backstick stage passes that are quite complicated. This is the most complicated test we have. The backstage, the backstage passes, the increase in price, in quality, the closer you, you get to the date of the concert, but after the concert, they are not worth anything. It all makes sense. So we've written all the tests for everything, and we now have eight tests passing. This means that we can finally get started. Well, what time is it? It's been 20 minutes, so we, we spent one third of our time just testing what we had. Now we can, we can start actually doing some work. And the first thing we're going to do is to write a failing test. And so to write a failing test, we know what, we, we, we have to know what, what we need to do. And so we have to, to add a new feature, this one, we have to be able to sell conjured items which degrade in quality twice as fast as the non normal items. So that sounds easy, but none of you wants to touch the current code. I don't either. So let's first go back to here and write our test for conjured items. So I guess there are two different cases that we need to uh, to account for, we first have the non-expired items that need to decrease by two since they age twice as fast. And the expired one have, have to decrease by four. Um, I'm also adding some test data so that we have some more complete test data and we can test that and we can now see that we have our failing test, yay. Thank you. I've never seen so many people upload for a failing test. Thank you. Um, next thing, and this is the second thing. You, you can see the, the, the threaded message there on the bottom right, live. Uh, so this, this, this may fail. I'm going to, to actually write the code for that. Um, if, if you, have you noticed something? We, we are dealing with items and we already have an item class at the bottom of this file. Um, what do you think we should do? How, how could we uh, handle different things that are almost similar but act slightly differently? Subclasses, yes. And so since we have subclass, this means that we're going to have to shift the responsibility of aging from the main collection to each item, so that's what we're going to do right now. And I could very much delete all this code. I should at some point, but what I'm going to do for now is that I'm going to comment it out just in case there's something that goes awfully wrong and I have to take a look at it. I really don't want to do that, but just in case, I'm going to, to keep it and comment it out. And so since we know that we're going to do subclasses, what I want to do is I want to, to just start with item and define what does a regular item do? So uh, let's see your, if you're still awake. What happens to the quality of a regular item every day? Decreases by one. So dev update quality, etc. 
self self dot quality minus equal one. What happens to the selling date? Yeah, it decreases by one. Selling, yes. Selling, sell by it's uh, so self dot sell in minus equals one. Okay, so that's for regular items, and we're going to start by with that. And it should probably still a few of our tests should probably still pass, but most likely not all of them. So let's see what happens. We have six failures. Six failures out of nine. That's one third of our tests passing. It's still still good. Hmm? I'm sorry, I, I cannot hear you. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the next thing that is that I remember for the definition is that is this one, and we're going to take them one by one. Once the sell by date is passed, quality degrades twice as fast. Um, we could do a, an if statement in the update quality, but that's in the end that would bring us back to where we started. So this is this is not really what we want. Um, does anybody has an idea how we could implement that? Yes, exactly. So I'm going to say out loud. So what, what was proposed is a degrade method or property that would calculate by how much each item should degrade. And we can do that, and except that we're going to call that rate to know at which rates it, it degrades. So this, this here, we have a property rate now. And if the selling date is less than zero, then the rate is two, otherwise the rate is one. And every time that we update the quality, we update the quality by <laughs> one times the rate. That's good, it's, it's easy so far to do refactoring. So, five failures, we fixed something. Great. Next one, the quality of an item is never negative. Well, we can do something complex with a min or something, but we're just, in this case, we're going to add an if. So, a simple test at the end of the update quality method. If the quality is under zero, we just put it back to zero. And four failures, really easy so far. Does it get more complicated afterwards? Um, oops, not the right screen. The next thing we have to take care of is that French, that French cheese again, which actually increases in quality. Can anybody have an idea on how to handle that? Subclass, yes, thank you. What people is still awake. Can you make some noise to, to tell me you're still awake? Okay. So, subclass, aged item here under, underneath it, and the decrement for that, we're going to uh, add a decrement property to regular items, and we're going to uh, run the update quality with that property, and for aged item, it's going to be minus one instead of one. So if we decrement by minus one, we increment by one, we make the quality go up. So this should work, shouldn't it? Oh, that doesn't work. Why? Doubling its uh, increase in value once it's expired, and shouldn't do that. No, no. We had four falling tests. We have six failing tests. It's probably because I I I didn't show you all the code. We we know we have items. We need to get the proper class for those items. So uh, we are uh, 
we have, uh, I've added a, a method, and I'm going to show it to you. It's really hard to type something <laughs> when you don't see it. So there's this get special as item for, which is a helper method, which will help us get the, the, the regular item, the, the, the item for the class. So now this means that we're making a copy of the original item, and we are updating the copy of the original item. And all our tests are done on the original item. So what we have to do to fix our tests is just make sure that we are testing um, on, uh, on, on the copied items. So here, for instead, the, the code previously was for item in items, and items was fed to the original class, and now we're going to test for item in gr.items. So which means that we are going to actually do the test on the item that's updated. This is something that is easily, that's very easy to get wrong when you do refactoring. You say, oh yeah, I'm going to, to do something different, I'm going to do subclass, and then you copy something, and you wonder why nothing is working anymore. It's because you're updating the copy, you're not updating the original, so you have to make sure that you test the right thing. <coughs> So we're back to four failures. Okay, we're back to four failures. That's the problem because we had four failures and we were trying to fix something. What else is wrong? Well, I could ask you, but I'm going to show you. It's easier. Here we have the test for quality uh, of, uh, uh, of aged items that was failing, and now we still have four failures, but the third test that fails is that the quality is never over 50. So we actually solved the problem, but we created another one. Um, so, we are going to fix this quite easily. We are going to do with like with uh, quality um, is never less than zero. Quality can never be over fifty. If it is, we put it back to fifty. Why did I use self dot max quality in some places and fifty in other places? Because I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, <laughs> But so does that solve anything? Yes, it solves it. We, have, we are now down to three failures. We're making huge progress. So the next thing is to write, um, why am I showing you the answer already? You have to participate, I'm, I'm hiding the answer. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to read the next line. Um, Sulfurous, does anybody know what the sulfurous is? What is it? It's a helmet. I, okay, thank you, I didn't. So they are, they are legendary items and they, uh, have, they never have to be sold. How can we solve that? You've probably seen it. It's... The, the update quality, basically during the update quality method, we have to do absolutely nothing. What do we do? Yes, subtype and overwrite. So that's what we're going to do. We, that's probably the easiest thing to do. We subtype and we create an update quality method that does nothing. Okay, so that should bring us to two failing tests. Yes, two failing tests. So what was the last one? This is probably the more complicated one. It's the backstage passes. Backstage passes are complicated stuff. <coughs> so this is probably going to be the, the most complicated part. I'm going to go relatively fast and tell you the answer. We are going to subclass and overwrite the method. Uh, but not, we are not going to overwrite everything. Um, we have two different sh things to do. One, we have to increase the rate as time passes. 
And then we have something else to do. If the sell by date is over, the quality then drops to zero. So the, the way I chose to do that is to have if statements in the rate and just check the selling date in the update quality method and call the parent if uh, the sell by is not passed. Um, you probably, uh, this is, a lot of you wanted to do the same thing as me. This is not the only way you can refactor that. This is the way I chose to do. Uh, this is the way the gentleman over there chose to do it apparently too because he's been saying a lot of things right. Uh, but uh, you can do that in other ways. You could have uh, completely rewritten the update quality method and everything, but this is, this is how I did it. Um, so uh, now do you remember at the beginning we said that we had, we only have one failure, we are back at the beginning. We, we now can start working. Um, and do you remember that we said that we had text fixtures? So now it's a good time to check the fixture output and see if we have the same thing. We don't have the same thing, but if you look at the right part of the screen, I told you that I did add some fixtures. So the only differences between the two files are the fixtures, the, the three additional fixtures that I added. So this means that this works. Great. Now I'm going to ask you again, now that we've done a lot of the work, how can we implement the last feature? By right? By changing the rate. By changing the rate. Thank you. So we're going to try to do that. Okay. Uh, and this is where I messed up my script. I didn't want to solve the, 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 this problem yet. Because one thing I didn't show you and I didn't mention is that I got a little note here at the bottom. Feel free to make any change to the update quality method. Right. As long as everything still works correctly. However, do not alter the item class or there is a goblin that's go not going to be happy. We did change the item class. Oops. So did, did we write all this code for nothing? Or can we try to fix this in an easy way? Yes, we tried to fix it, but how? Okay, so here in Python, there's something that's, uh, there's a design pattern that's quite easy to implement. It's called the proxy pattern. So everything that we wrote for the item class, we can just move it down to an item proxy class. And the item proxy, what it does is that it takes the, an item as uh, an input and, uh, in the init method, it takes the item. And right, when you try to get the quality or the selling date on that item proxy, it's going to give you back the quality of its item. And when you try to set the quality or the selling uh, date on that uh, proxy is going to set it on the item. So what we're doing is that we're wrapping each item in a, in a proxy. It's like uh, if you want it, you put it in a big plastic bag and when you look through the plastic bag, you see what's inside of it, but it's just inside the plastic bag. So we don't change the item uh, class, we just wrap it in a proxy. And everything that we wrote all the specialized class, they can be specialized proxy and we can wrap any item in its own proxy. That way we don't change anything to the item class. And the only thing we have to, the only other thing that we have to change to make this work is that we have to change this get specialized item method. And 
let it return an item proxy instead of returning a uh, returning uh, an item. Um, I guess I didn't explain this. So um, there's a regular expression. Who needs? Uh, who is familiar with regular expression? Okay, most of you. For those of you who are not, this basically means that you are taking the first word of the name of the item. That's, that's what this regular expression means. Then we try to uh, find a class that we're going to be using. And we can not use class with a CES variable name because yeah, it's already used for something else. Um, and the class is going to be item proxy if there is no first uh, word in the name. There are some special cases that start with plus five and stuff like that. So there is no first word in the name. Or otherwise, we are going to look at all the variables, everything that is declared in the current module, and try to get an item proxy by that name, like aged item proxy or something like that. And if we cannot find it, the default value will be item proxy. So everything special, you give me the special proxy. Everything non-special, you give me the regular proxy. <coughs> and so we can re-update our tests so that um, the test run on um, the test run on regular items, as well as the, the fixtures, we can run them on items, and we don't have to run them on gr.items. So that, that, that fixed our issue with the goblins, because who wants to have troubles with goblins? OK, so now let's actually fix this, and let's go back to the solution, which is, um, so the fixture back there, um, which is to add a different rate for our conjured items. And so all we have to do is to create a new class with a different rate. So the new feature, actually implementing the new feature is two lines of code, only two lines of code. All the, everything that we've been doing for 45 minutes has been just getting, getting us ready to do that. Uh, so why did we spend 45 minutes doing all that? Uh, but because we're going to keep working for that in, and we did. Nobody here wanted to touch that code. No, we did spend 45 minutes, we, which we would probably have spent to read what the method was doing and try to understand it. But now we have some clean code, and now that we have to ch make a change, it's only two, two lines. And just to make sure. Everything passes, the nine tests pass. And finally, I, I, I'm a bit curious. You remember at the beginning, I ran the complexity test. So we get something that are a bit complex. We are getting a specialized class. We have a method for that. Um, what is the, complex, the complexity of the new code? A, A everywhere. So. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, so of course, in real, in real life code, A everywhere is something that you cannot achieve. You will, you will probably not achieve that. It should not be a metric in itself to try to, uh, to have all A's, but try to have as few D's, E, and F's as you can, uh, and stay everything mostly in A and B and sometimes C. Um, there are other things, there are other uh, indexes that you can uh, measure with uh, Radon. I'm going to show you. Uh, so here we have been uh, measuring the complexity. It's pretty simple. Every time you have an if or an else if, it's, uh, you add one point, and so that's how the complexity is measured, and then it makes some computation uh, with the number of lines and everything. Uh, this library also uh, gives you a maintainability index. I'm not going to explain that formula. Um, that's, um, 
something that's not useful for this kind of refactoring, but it's based, based on the number of lines in the file and the number of lines in methods. So it can be really helpful to have that. The tool is called Vaden, R-A-D-O-N. Uh, you will have the link in the, um, in the slides. And just to make sure, we can take a look at the side by side. We have a lot, a lot more items on the on the new code, but everything, every new item is very simple. So now you see it side by side. And uh, that's about it. So I was a bit fast. So we have time for questions. If you have questions, please line up. So, thank you. That was an example where you have like a really clear specification from yes. the client. But what strategies do you use in order to get the specification out of the initial mess? Okay, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, it, the answer is it depends. Uh, if you have something that you trust in the organization that you can go ask questions, you can go try to try to find this information. If all you have is a bunch of documents, uh, you're better off uh, trying to read the, the actual code, the current code, trying to understand it. And the parts that you don't understand, don't spend too much time trying to understand it. We, in this case, we had some fixtures you probably have in whatever context this is, you probably have some data, and you can just run uh, the, the existing code on the existing data, see how it behaves, and get, try to guess the specification from that. Um, depending on your organization, there is some, somebody who should know these things, and who you can ask, maybe it's not some, somebody you trust, but somebody from the business side. Uh, if you're in a, in a large company, you're in the IT department, you're told to do that, you don't have all the specifications because someone left. Well, this is uh, for the sales department. Get up, go to the sales department, find the person who's using this thing and ask them, oh, is this supposed to work? Um, there is no miracle recipe, it really depends on where you work, in which context. But there is always at least somebody that has a vague idea of how it works. Either it's the final user, either it's your client that you might not be supposed to talk directly, you are supposed to talk to your manager. Don't call them, send them an email or something, but try to get in touch with the person who actually needs to use that code. Hello. Um, I have a question related to the business side of the justifications. So obviously, as an engineer, we want you to always have the clean code. And then if you go to the, the client and look at the code, oh, your whole code needs to be rewritten and refactored. So how do you handle that pressure, like business pressure, say, you pay me the money, suppose I just add one feature. <coughs> However, you in the end, you said, like this, you know, every code needs to be uh, changed. And then uh, they, they, they say, oh, I hire you just for adding one line, but you in the end, you change everything and take that long time, and then um, it, it once again it depends. In the the example that I gave at the beginning of the talk, the client hired me to make things more maintainable and uh, faster. So, rewriting is part of my job. Um, when it is not explicitly part of your job, uh, it's hard to uh, justify that you spend three three fourths of your time refactoring something instead of actually working on the new feature. You don't have to rewrite the whole code of the client. Uh, here, this was the whole code of the client. We rewrote almost everything. But most of the time, your feature, the feature that you're going to have to implement, is probably going to be one small portion, in, is going to, to involve one small portion of the code of the client. So uh, the best way to go about it, and it, it also, it, once again, it also depends on the client 
and how uh, they understand the need to have clean code and stuff. If they don't understand, uh, just refactor as you need to. So you're writing a new feature, you really don't understand that method, refactor the, the little part that you don't understand, create the feature, and day by day, the code will get cleaner. Um, that's usually how I, I do it when, when the client really doesn't want to hear anything. Um, most, in my experience, and no, this is my experience and it, it is different everywhere, but most clients, most end, end clients seem to be more and more aware that they need to have maintainable code. So it's easier now to tell the client that, hey, I'm going to do a little bit of maintenance on your code than it was maybe five years ago. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, yes. Hello. Regarding the Radon tool, is a static code analysis tool. Uh, I'm using um, Sonar Cube for my project. How does Raiden act with uh, Django functions and models and so on? Um, usually, uh, you get a, a, a B. Uh, you get a B for most models. Uh, it's hard to, to have models with A. It depends if you have fat models or skinny models. Um, for Everyone, fat models is where you have all the functionalities of the model inside the model. Skinny models is where you have a surface that takes a model and changes the model when you want to, for example, uh, mark an invoice as paid. Uh, so it depends. But if you have fat model, you can you can get away with Bs and Cs. Uh, don't expect an A. Um, and sometimes, if this is something really complicated, you might get one, one D or something. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? If not, let's thank our speaker one more time. Thank you.